Hello there! Today I want to show you some cool transparency effects that I implemented into the game. I implemented three different and interesting effects. First of all, I made a fake reflection effect, which gives surfaces like water or glass a proper shininess. This also allowed me to make clear glass without requiring a white border. This big glass pane over there, for example, is almost invisible from a certain angle. I think this is really cool. For example, it allows making glass mazes that make you bump against the wall all the time. Secondly, I also made an absorption effect for colored glass. I think this makes colored glass a lot cleaner and more realistic. Additionally, this adds some fun interactions. For example, if I add this ore block, then it appears blue on one side, orange on the other and purple on the last one. Lastly, I also added the traditional overlaid transparency effect. For example, this is the red glass texture for Minecraft. Once again, if you compare this with the absorptive glass, you can really see the difference. Minecraft's glass is more like a slightly foggy overlay that doesn't seem to change the background color. Whereas the absorptive glass looks cleaner and really interacts with the background. And additionally, as a bonus feature, later in the video I'll show another cool effect that is kind of impressive, but sadly doesn't quite work. Alright, let's get into the implementation details. The fake reflection effect is quite simple to achieve. Essentially, I calculate the reflected light vector and look that up in a noise map. Transparency, however, is actually quite a difficult topic. That's mainly because it's order dependent. It makes a big difference which phase we draw first. So either we need to sort something, or we need to sacrifice quality for computational efficiency. And of course there's also ray tracing, but I won't talk about that because it's too inefficient for integrated graphics cards. So far I have encountered three possible solutions. First of all, there is the classical approach to just sort the triangles. This is by far the most annoying thing, because all transparent triangles of every mesh need to be sorted front to back. However, once all the triangles are sorted, this is probably the most efficient approach, because it only requires the blending step of the graphics pipeline, which is used by the other approaches as well. Instead of sorting triangles, we can also sort the fragments of each pixel. Usually this is done with depth peeling, which is essentially a selection sort. In each step it renders all the transparent triangles and uses the depth buffer to discard all fragments that were already rendered in past steps. Then it uses a second depth buffer to find the closest of these. Of course, this makes the entire process slower, because we need to draw each transparent triangle multiple times, and it may add some artifacts when there are too many layers of transparency. And finally, there is the option to use an order independent blend function. I have seen a few other YouTubers do this, usually based on this article. Essentially, the output of each fragment is weighted based on depth. A closer fragment gets a higher weight, so it looks as if it was in front of the others. A pretty clever approach, but it requires an additional post-processing step to combine all the data, and an additional color buffer to sum up all of the weights. While this usually works quite well and is probably the easiest to set up, I don't like how it looks when there is overlapping geometry. Check out this image from Douglas' video. The red thing is clearly supposed to be behind the transparent tree. 
but it kind of looks as if it was in front of it. Additionally, it only works for overlay transparency effects and as you may have noticed in the beginning, I also want absorptive transparency. Now the fun stuff is that absorption on its own is actually also order independent. But sadly, I want both effects, which seems more complicated to achieve in an order independent way. All of these approaches aren't really that great in my opinion. It would probably be easiest to implement these effects with depth peeling, but that sounds kind of expensive. Especially considering that someone might place a million glass blocks. Maybe I'll try it in the future though, it does look promising in some ways. Using sorted faces would be an easy way, apart from the sorting of course. But we have to use the hardware blend function, which is really limiting. Essentially, we can control three parameters. The destination color, capital D, is the previous color of the pixel. The source color, capital S, is the output of our fragment shader. And the other two parameters can be chosen from the source or destination colors or be a constant. Now let's look at the equation I want to have. The first term is for absorption and the second term basically is the classical overlay transparency effect. As you can see, we would need two different source colors from the fragment shader and that's not possible. Wait, what's that? Dual source blending. Dual source blending refers to a blending mode where the fragment shader outputs two colors to the same output buffer. That is exactly what I want. It's insane what hidden gems there are in OpenGL. Why is no one else using this? This seems like the perfect solution. Now I just need to figure out how to sort my faces. Since Cubus is a voxel game, I can do some assumptions that make the sorting easier. First of all, we don't even need a fully sorted list of triangles. It is enough to ensure that all potentially overlapping triangles are in the right order. Additionally, all the chunks are non-overlapping cubes. So it is enough to sort the chunks first and then only sort the faces inside each chunk. This greatly reduces complexity. Instead of sorting a list of a million faces, I just need to sort a thousand lists of a thousand faces. With n log n scaling, this would make it twice as fast. Sorting all the chunks is fairly cheap, even with insertion sort. In fact, I've been doing this already for other reasons. So let's look at the blocks inside the chunk. Here we also have some freedom in regards to how we sort. I found that the easiest way to sort the blocks is in this pattern. Hey, are those just small integer numbers? I could use a bucket sort on them. Bucket sort is a really cool algorithm. Essentially, it works like this. First of all, we calculate the bucket each object belongs to. Then we place the object in that bucket. And finally we go through all buckets in order and place each item into a new list. And that's it. Even better, we can cache the starting position of the sorting algorithm and only ever update the list if the starting position changed. This means we only need to resort the list once the player moved by more than a block. Time for some bonus content. In the Java version of Cubis, I had this really cool volumetric fog effect. But sadly, it didn't work reliably because it didn't use the blending function and thus was producing data wastes. For volumetric fog, I basically need to know the depth value of the previous fragment. 
Now, so far, I only used the color component of the blending equation, so the alpha component is basically untouched. Maybe I can somehow put the depth value into the alpha component to produce volumetric fog. In computer graphics, there is this concept of homogeneous coordinates. Basically, you have three position coordinates and one scaling factor w. To convert this back to a normal 3D vector, the first three components are divided by the scaling factor. Normally this is used to make the projection mass easier, but here we can actually use it to make things transparent. Normally to make things transparent we multiply the original value by 1 minus alpha and the new value by alpha. However, with homogeneous coordinates, we can also multiply the double component by 1 over 1 minus alpha and add the new value times alpha over 1 minus alpha. Notice that we didn't apply anything to the destination color. With that in mind, I looked for a way to implement volumetric fog. Essentially, we now need to consider the distance between the back and the front face. My basic idea is that the back face adds as much fog as there would be if the entire path to the camera was filled in fog. Then the front face subtracts all the extra fog. To have a good fog effect, I think there's two properties that should be fulfilled. First of all, if the depth of the fog is zero, then it should have no effect. And secondly, the fog intensity should be independent of the distance to the foggy region. So if I move away, the fog should not change in density. The first condition means that we should do the inverse of the transformation for the front face. Doesn't look too bad. The only question remaining is how alpha is scaled. Basically, after applying the back and front face, we get this value for w. Now, we want this value to be only dependent on the difference of these distances. Let's generalize this a bit. At this point, I couldn't really find a solution, so I just played around with some different functions. By luck, I found that this is actually just an exponential function. Kind of obvious in hindsight. <laughs> now let's actually try this in action. As you can see, it works quite well and is looking pretty good. As I move away, the effect stays constant, just like we want. However, if I move too far away, then the exponential function gets too big and I get floating point inaccuracy and the original color is truncated. So overall this is a fun idea, but maybe a bit impractical. I could reduce the fox length until it doesn't cause problems, but I think that would make the effect too weak overall. That's why I won't implement this for now. Alright, that's all I have for you today. But I can maybe give you a little preview for my next video. I have been rewriting a big chunk of terrain generation in the past months and I think I managed to get some cool stuff. But I still have some rough edges to figure out and I also want to add a couple more biomes before the next video. Sadly for you, I'm also back to my old video schedule, so this will take some time. <laughs>